our goal should be to live life in radical amazement, to get up in the morning, look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. I'm quoting the words of Rabbi Abraham Heschel. Hear now the words of our rabbi. Jesus' words can be so soothing. Words of blessed assurance. Listen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see infinite beauty, God. To be spiritual is to try to open yourself to that experience. Listen to him. Wherever two or three gather, I am there. Lo, I am with you always. To be spiritual is to attune yourself to his presence. Listen to him. Keep searching. Keep asking. You will find it. To be spiritual in some way is to keep seeking and searching. But did you hear in the midst of these soothing spiritual words, he also says, watch out, the world can go sideways. We'll start deceiving one another and love will grow cold. Well, I think to be spiritual is to make sure you are a presence of love and truth in our world. Love could grow cold. Are you helping tip the balance towards more love in the world? I, I know when I say spiritual, you might think I'm talking about yoga or meditation or chatting in the vitamin aisle at Whole Foods, and all that's great. But I mean something more essential and fierce. Are you part of tipping the balance towards love and hope in our world? Because love could grow cold. I'm in a sermon series called Essential Spirituality, and this now is the last segment. So, I want to get back to the basics here. William James said that there are three aspects to a person. You have your material self, your social self, and your spiritual self. He said the material self is the things you have to do in this world to take care of your material fortunes and your body and how you will be. And, and so the material self takes most of our time, probably most of our energy, but he thought it was actually the most superficial aspect of ourselves. Then there's the social self, and he thought almost everyone knew this is more important. The social self is your family, your loved ones, your friends, your relationships. Almost everyone understands at some point in their life that's what really matters, your friends and loved ones. But then he said there's also our spiritual selves, and he thought that was the most expansive part of the human being. The spiritual self has to do with your idea, ideas and your values and your, your, your spirituality and your religion and your hopes. He said it's the biggest part of ourselves, but it's the easiest part to neglect. So I'm in a sermon series called Essential Spirituality to make sure we don't neglect that aspect of ourselves. I want to tell a joke. There's this small plane with five passengers. 
midair and the engine fails. The pilot comes out of the cockpit with a parachute already strapped on and addresses the passengers and says, I have good news and I have bad news. Now, the bad news is this plane is going down. I've, I've tried everything. It's going down. The good news is there's several parachutes on this plane. But the bad news is there's only four parachutes left and five of you. So thank you for choosing our airlines. I hope you have a wonderful evening, whatever is your final destination. <laughs> and then he jumps out the door. Well, immediately, one of the passengers leaps to her feet and says, I'm a brain surgeon. There are so many people relying on me for their very lives. And so she grabs a parachute, puts it on, and jumps out the door. Then all of a sudden, another guy jumps up and says, well, I'm head of a major law firm. There are so many people we're trying to take care of right now, and, and surely I should get a chute. So he grabs a parachute, straps it on, and jumps out the door. And then a third person jumps up and says, I'm the smartest person in the world. I won't even tell you my IQ. You wouldn't believe it. And they grab a pack, put it on, and jump out the door. And that leaves an elderly man and a teenage boy sitting there. The elderly man turns to the teenage boy and says, listen, take the last parachute. I've had a good life. You've got so much ahead of you. Take that chute and God bless you. The teenage boy is just grinning back at him and says, oh, no worries. There's two parachutes left. The smartest man in the world just grabbed my backpack and jumped out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I like that joke, but I told it because I think, I think in our lives, it can feel like at any moment it could all come crashing down. I mean, I think that there's a type of anxiety all of us feel these days. Really, there's a certain negativity that starts to take hold in our lives, that we're just trying to survive, we're just grabbing parachutes, really, and, and, and it could all just come crashing down. I, I worry that there's a, a type of increasing negativity. And so in this last segment of a sermon series on essential spirituality, I want to remind us that part of being spiritual is finding a type of positivity. Now, I don't mean simple positive thinking. That's, that's wonderful. I mean something more basic. A spiritual positivity is when you know that life has meaning and purpose. See, I worry that there's like a negativity at play that's increasing the amount of people that think, Maybe my life doesn't matter much. Maybe there's really not that much meaning and purpose to all this. It just seems like chaos. And it feels to me that negativity is spreading. But to be spiritual is to somehow lay hold to the goodness of life and that it has meaning and purpose. Let me remind you of maybe the most terrible word in the English language. The word is nihilism. That word comes from the Latin root nihil, meaning nothing. So nihilism is basically nothingism. Nihilism is the philosophical viewpoint that nothing matters. Life has no purpose. No meaning. Nihilism. It's this radical philosophical stance that there are no morals that matter, that, that if there was a choice, it would be better if nothing existed. It would be better if nobody was ever born. I think there's actually very few philosophical nihilists, but 
there's this creeping meaninglessness of people not being sure that they matter or that anything has much meaning. I think we're falling into what I would call an anthropological confusion, just meaning I'm not sure we know what being a human being is anymore. I, I, it's, it's as if we've lost sight of that. Science will tell us that you are an animal. This is good. I mean, we're a mammal, yes, but where do you go from there? We need to know more than that. What is it to be a human being? The economy will say you're basically a consumer. Well, that, that's not it. Or, or governmental systems will say that you are a number and that they're making decisions based on big bean-counting numbers, but we're more than that. The social media will say somehow you're, you're your avatar, whatever you're cre- curating in the social media world, but we're losing hold of what is it to be a human being. And I worry there's more meaninglessness at play, maybe not full-blown nihilism, So I'm doing something right now. It's been maybe 20 years, but I've gone back and started watching Seinfeld episodes. It's been like 20 years, and if it's been long enough, you forget how good it is. I mean, it's, it's really funny. And, and if you remember, they say that show is about nothing, right? D- Larry David, the creator, do you remember his mantra for the show to all the actors? The mantra was this, no hugging and no learning. <laughs> it's just a show about nothing. And there's been people that have theorized that Seinfeld is promoting a nihilism, that it's not just a show about nothing, it's saying life doesn't matter, life is nothing. I think they've got that wrong because I'm watching Seinfeld and you kind of fall in love with the characters. They're relatable, and, and, and it really creates a warmth. I think it's a satire of nihilism. I think it's trying to put front and center that it could be light. people will start to think that life is nothing. I, I think it's trying to satirize it. That's what I think. And I just saw the episode that is like the vision of how you would satirize nihilism. Do you remember the parking garage? Let me remind you, Jerry and Elaine and Kramer and George have headed out to New Jersey because Kramer needs to buy an air conditioning unit. They park in the parking garage, they go into the mall, they come back out, Kramer's carrying this big box of air conditioner, and they can't remember where they parked. Has that ever happened to you? And then they begin to wander around this massive parking garage searching for their car, wandering aimlessly through this parking garage, the perfect vision of life having no meaning whatsoever. Elaine had just bought a goldfish in the mall, and she's carrying this little goldfish in a a saran wrap bag, right? And and she's afraid the goldfish is going to die, and, and Kramer gets tired of holding the air conditioner, sets it down behind a car, and tries to memorize that parking space, if he could remember that as they go look for the car, and, and Jerry really has to pee. And he's got to pee so badly that at some point he just decides to pee in the corner, but then remember the security guard arrests him for that, and... and, and You just watch this wandering aimlessly, and they can't find their car. They can't find anything. By the end of the show, they find the car. But Kramer can't remember where the air conditioning box was. They all get in their car. George has now missed his his parents' anniversary. The goldfish has died. And they're sitting there in the car, but they all seem kind of happy. Oh, I think it's a perfect satire when life feels like a parking garage. So I want to use the last moments of this last segment of essential spirituality to make a statement, to reclaim again 
that our lives have meaning and purpose. So listen, there have been three basic spiritual notions that have shaped our very civilization. Indeed, they have shaped our human lives in the most basic way. Number one, that every human being has been created by God and is equal in God's sight. Number two, that we will be held in some way accountable for our actions during our lifetime. That it matters in which manner you lead your life and whether you have adhered to basic values, the way you treat people, and that the actions you choose should be noble and kind. All of this matters, the life you lead. It matters in some fundamental way. And number three is this overarching grand idea that all the aspects of our human lives, all our thoughts, all our actions, all the phenomenon of our lives, everything we do is being held together in the mind of God. That there is meaning and purpose and coherence embedded in the universe because there is God. And because there is God, there is meaning and purpose to your personal existence. You see, the essence of spirituality is, of course, a belief in God. But I don't so much mean a belief in some theology or a specific doctrine of God. I mean spirituality is living your life as if God is real, and God is real. So your life has cosmic meaning and purpose. I don't mean a belief in the exact right version of religion, or adherence to the perfect Christian denomination, whatever that possibly could be. I mean that God is real, not that religion is real. God is real, and the ultimate spirituality is living as if God is real. And then who you are and how you act and your whole life, all of this matters in some ultimate way because there is God. The essential spirituality is that life matters, and life has a goodness beyond any sorrow, a love Love greater than any despair. Essential spirituality is knowing that there is the God of Jeremiah 29. For I know I have plans for you to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Essential spirituality is knowing that there is the God of Joshua chapter 1. Do not be frightened. Do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Essential spirituality is knowing that there is the God of Psalm 19, that God is real, that look around, the heavens declare the glory of God. Look up, the stars display God's handiwork. Essential spirituality is knowing that there is the God of Isaiah, chapter 41. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you. You are mine. Essential spirituality is trusting that God is real, living as if God is real. Essential spirituality is looking within and becoming still. and knowing there is God. And that your life matters beyond your wildest imagination. There is God.